LEGO Star Wars 25th Anniversary continues. This does of course mean we have an excitingly novel minifigure being thrown our way, and we will get into that as I definitely have things to say. However, this also happens to be coinciding with the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace, giving us a Sith Infiltrator refresh, a set that I couldn't wait to get my hands on. I understand I'm a little late to this May 1st drop, however, after looking at photos and seeing how sleek and clean this set looked, it seemed like a must have. Though, does this set live up to those expectations? What about those minifigures? How yellow is too yellow? Well, let's take a look. Let's start with those minifigures. Not you though, you will need special treatment. We'll get started with little Anakin Skywalker, a minifigure that had remained unchanged for the longest time. All that sets this guy apart from previous incarnations is that face print. However, the face prints do a good job of conveying a childlike appearance. Might not be the most exciting minifigure, but it successfully translates the on-screen appearance from the necklace to the pouches. One thing I find to be confusing though is that LEGO introduced little minifigure legs that move, and refused to use them here. That would have definitely lifted did this minifigure up for me. It's just compared to the rest of the minifigures, these printless frozen legs look very out of place. Qui-Gon Jinn is next, and I need to get this out of my system first and foremost. The poncho included is amazing. It can look a little big, but it's one of those extra additions that makes the minifigure that much more interesting. It's perhaps the added dimension or the different material that makes the minifigure look complete. Aside from the poncho, it's a great looking but otherwise fairly standard Qui-Gon minifigure that we've seen before. I feel like the face print is a slight step back from the Qui-Gon scene in the 2015 Infiltrator. There I feel the beard printing looks a lot better, but it's a minor nitpick. Lastly is Darth Maul. The robe printing looks great, it stays pretty consistent with previous Darth Mauls. The feet printing is a nice touch as well. The face print is mostly alright, again following in the long line of nice looking Darth Maul face prints, though I can't help but feel unnerved at the receiving end of such a piercing gaze. Some more obvious pupils would have been much appreciated. I rush to add that this is another minor nitpick, it's just a small detail but it's one that you can't unsee, so sorry about that. The overall verdict is the minifigure selection doesn't have me as enthusiastic, it nonetheless gets the job done. As mentioned in the intro, the sleek design is something that really drew me in. Fitting together flat tile pieces like a jigsaw never gets old, and in the build department, this does not disappoint. From start to finish, this set was every bit of fun to put together. How about the design of it all though? In person, the sleek rounded off design looks just as good. The effort put into making this not look blocky really shines through. This is especially true of the cockpit and surrounding section. These wedge pieces were a highlight of the build experience and continue to be one of the highlights of the overall design. The cockpit remains round while still being able to completely open up, revealing Darth Maul's little scooter in there. This is a great time to mention this set has not a single sticker. I really meant it when I said the build was really fun, and the omission of stickers helped massively. Moving up the length of the ship, we have some nice detailing that integrates quite well. The nose of the ship decreases in quality somewhat, more tile pieces would have been great to see. This section also houses the two play features. The first is a pair of very well integrated spring-loaded shooters just about the best implementation I've seen. They fit in with the main build so well. The second feature is a tab that releases these probe droids. I'm going to be honest, this isn't doing it for me, but I understand features like this aren't for customers of my demographic. So the build is mostly pretty neat. Like mentioned, the pointed main body of the ship isn't as well put together as the cockpit, leading to a still great build, but one that doesn't punch above its weight class. Alright, it's time to tackle that 25th anniversary minifigure. This set brings us a Saw Gerrera minifigure, as seen in Rogue One. The staff and various tubing indicates as much. As for that printing, it's executed very well. There's a good balance of detail and contrast, making sure it doesn't look overwhelming or busy. The use of the Dark Trooper chess piece gives me mixed opinions. It works thanks in no small part to the printing, but doesn't capture the asymmetry of Saw's armour as well as I would have hoped. That being said though, the printing and hands add back in that Required asymmetry. The cape piece included is great, really liking the pattern. The staff is nice and includes a piece that would have worked so well for Darth Maul's lightsaber hill. However, with all of that being said, this is the greenest saw you ever did see. Is he usually this green? Are all the scenes he's in just dark? Because I don't recall quite this level of green. This is 100% my favourite 25th anniversary figure so far. But I just wasn't prepared for the cognitive dissonance this figure induced. Overall, though, it's a pretty nice looking figure. 
2024 Sith Infiltrator understood what it needed to be. The minifigure with the exception of Saw were not incredibly exciting, but were required to complete the scene. At that $59.99 price point, it delivered on the task it set out to deliver on. If you weren't already interested in buying this set, I don't recommend it. The price is a big ask. However, if you're someone who is already interested, or perhaps on the fence, I reckon it's worth picking up. And with all that being said, thank you for watching.